Hello again, everyone. Welcome to episode two of Aldo Meets in conjunction with the sponsorship of Hotel Anfield. Peter Lee alongside. Um, over the course of the season, we're going to be talking to some fantastic Liverpool players and people represented uh, with the club. And um, some who didn't actually play, but uh, Liverpool at heart. And uh, before I say that, uh, and mention people, and I mentioned my guest in particular. I want to thank all the sponsors who are uh, big reds, uh, Liverpool Connect Taxi and Transfer Services, Bell Lamb and, and Joints and Solicitors, Kingdom Plumbing, Olympic Scaffold and Tower High, Northwest Fencing, and Onyx Estate Agents. So thank you very much for the sponsorship. Well appreciated. And we raised good money for some good local charities. Uh, anyway, apart from that, to my left, I've got one of the best players and best p person, funniest person, I should say, actually, that I've had the pleasure to be alongside in the dressing room. My old mate, my old muck, a great player, Steve Nichol. Hi, Bump. Hi, right, Aldo. You good? Great to meet you, pal. Me too, son. Great to see you. By the way, can I ask you a question? No. <laughs> Don't start because he makes me laugh all the time. I'm trying to be sensible. Hotel Anfield, does that start with a capital O? <laughs> Hotel Anfield. <laughs> Whatever I don't want. <laughs> but Steve had loads of uh, nicknames at the club. Bumper. What's the other one? Chips. Chips. I know. Yeah. Nickel, Steve. Some of the songs we can't mention. Some of the ones we can't <laughs> Chico. Chico. Yeah. Chico. Well oh, done, mate. Yeah. Chico. Yeah. I'm sure we'll talk about that down the line. <laughs> Peter? Yes, let's let's crack on. How does it feel to be back in Liverpool, Steve? What brings you back this time? Do you know, to be honest, I came back to see some of the boys, including all of them. Um, I was asked to do a, a, an, an appearance in and the Floral Pavilion in, in New Brighton uh, with Sammy uh, and John. We did that on Thursday. Um, so, yeah, mainly that. I don't often get the chance to come back. So, so I took it and I'm here and I'm doing exactly what I wanted to see some of my own mates and have a couple of pints. That's, That's the most important thing. Cheers to that. Yeah, cheers. Thanks, cheers. And thanks to the two sponsors that John yes. forgotten earlier. No, no, I was just going to say cheers for Budweiser. <laughs> and who would they be? Uh, <laughs> Budweiser and Dortmund Union Brewery. Which Can I have a Budweiser? We're finding out. We'll get another one. That's it's not bad, you know, that Dortmund. It's quite nice. No, the Budweiser's all right, isn't it? But, but you know, yeah. apart from what we're going to talk about, you know, and this is important because all the proceeds go to the amazing Zoe's Place and Owen McPhee Foundation, um, which is why we're here, basically. We're just going to have a good time trying to talk and bring back some great memories, you know, about Steve's Steve's great career, not just with Liverpool, as a manager over in uh, the USA, which a lot of people don't know about. Well, we'll get into that, won't we, James? Yeah, we, we, will, we will do, yeah. <clears throat> just in part one, Steve, let's, let's talk a bit about what you're up to these days. You've, obviously, the job with ESPN must still keep you busy. Yeah, I mean, it's funny you call it a job. Does it not feel like one? Well, listen, the truth is, my preparation means getting up if there's an early game, obviously, particularly if it's Liverpool. I set my alarm for half seven, eight o'clock in the morning, get up, turn the telly on, get on to get me a cup of tea and a chocolate biscuit, sit in my bed and watch the game. I get paid to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's hardly a job. I mean, it's great. Go to ESPN probably four or five times a week. Um, watch games, generally the Premier League. We do, we do uh, La Liga uh, and we do the Bundesliga in particular. Those two along with talking about the Premier League. So and so they pay me. Would you do like on a Saturday, like the the early game, then the three o'clock game because you can't hold it, then the late game. So you do three games or. Well, I'm just, I watch them. We don't actually have a show during that. Oh, we, nice. we have a show with the uh, the Bundesliga uh, and we have the, the show with the Spanish League. Yeah. But the actual show that I generally do is we're either on live at six or at the weekend five. Nice. And and it's mainly about the Premier League. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, again, it's it's a job, yes. 
But I mean, what a job! It's great. Watch watch football and then talk about it. And I'd probably watch the games anyway, <laughs> even if I won't work at ESPN. Uh, are you biased? Like, like I, I, I try I'm, not to be biased, but I'm very biased. Do you know what? I'm not biased. <laughs> and actually, you know. it annoys me. Because I don't know whether you remember. Remember I called you and asked who... I think his name was Matt Stevens. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you did. You're well, because the yeah. echo. What, the Liverpool what? echo. The Liverpool <laughs> echo. Co, 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 co. <laughs> what did he do? Well, what they do is, so all the time when Liverpool were fantastic three or four years ago when they were winning Premier League, Champions League, the whole thing, and everybody's kissing their backside, mm. including me, rightly so. Mm. So over the last 18 months, two years, when they've, you know, yeah. like happens to everybody, they struggle a little bit. So when you criticise them, all of a sudden, I see articles appear in the Liverpool Echo that I'm criticising the team, which makes me look bad. I mean, it really annoys me, which is why I called you to try and find out yeah. who this, I won't say the word I want to, yeah. who this guy was. <laughs> but if it's criti- if it's constructive criticism, you know, that's no problem. If you come out and say he's crap and he's rubbish and what have you, that's different. Yeah. But, you know, but that's what I do. But yeah, they don't, you know. that's not what they print, John. Yeah, the headline. Yeah, 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 I don't know, yeah. You, the you, classic, they make the headline you, and then they print yeah, actually you what you said. What's the one thing you said then? That, yeah. Correct. You, you know, James, you've you done it a couple of times. I you know. know. <laughs> The, uh, no, but you're right, aren't you? They're like, no, because guilty, it, yeah. that, 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 no, that but it's the headline thing. makers mostly. It's yeah, not, yeah, you, yeah, you put yeah. your piece down, the yeah. headline makers try to make yeah. it a bit juicy. And, and the reality is, if you say something negative, that's going to attract a lot more attention than saying something positive, right. which is, yeah. But, yeah. but I suppose also a big part of being a pundit is you've got to be able to call it as you see it, otherwise you're not doing your job properly. No, yeah. exactly. And I do call it as I see it. And if it means that, that somebody who's not played well, then you say they've not, yeah, you have absolutely. to say they've not yeah. played well. I mean, I'll give you a great example of, of what I would do. I've I've been, a, as far as defending, I'm probably not alone, but as far as defending with Trent Alexander, for example, I've certainly criticised them. Mm. But I'll tell you what I did last week. And again, I was lying in my bed watching the game. <laughs> he must have played three or four passes in that game from the right back position. Ridiculous. That were, that you, I was sitting clappers. Like, I was sitting, I was I was lying in my bed with a cup of tea and I was actually going, wow, that is, that is unbelievable. So as much as I'll criticise him when he can't defend, I bring that up as well. Yeah. To me, that's fair. No, he's right. No, that's what you got to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and as full back school, you, you know, you played left back and right back, centre half, so ah. right, right across there. So if you can't say it, who can? Yeah. But I'm just thinking about the, how many, how many medals or what did you actually win for it? But, and what does the club really mean to you? And you, you know, well, you've got people I've no you. idea. Medals wise, I've no idea. No, you must know what you've won. Come on, bump. You've won. I can five league made, titles. You, how many titles have you won? Five. Well, I was involved in five. I didn't, because you obviously, the first one, I didn't play enough games to get a medal. But it doesn't matter. Ah, so, so exactly. So that's why your boots called five. How many, how many games did you play? And a packet of Chris. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. How many? How many did you play then? That, that year, games. I can't remember. No, but there's, there's a, the, you had to, you had to play yeah, a third changed. of the games. No, it's changed. Right. You must talk about that afterwards because I know it's someone wrote to me about regarding the ex players and medals last year sometime. I'll, I'll, I'll fish it out because I think you, you you may be eligible. So don't do yourself. You know you might right. you got that extra one anyway. So well, that, the thing is, I don't. How many European cups? One, two. I won one on one loser. Okay. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I actually don't need the medals to to include myself in the one that I didn't get a medal in because I know I contributed. Oh yeah, because you know what we were like. It was all about. It was always a, it was always about the team. It was never about yourself. And so everybody contributing was a key factor. So if you contributed, you deserve the medal. If you didn't get it, in my brain, I still know I did something. To contribute towards winning Absolutely. the league. Absolutely. In the dressing room as well. He's number one. He's number one in the dressing room. The funniest man in the club. And everyone just buzzed off. off. But, but that goes a long way. I can no. assure you, it wasn't bad. No, <laughs> it's like, no but you, all the great sides, and you ask, you can go to all the great sides within, you know, in, in England over the years that have dominated whatever. The dressing room, buzzing. The good people around you, you're all fit in. And that that goes a long way when you've got someone contributing as well as that for the team spirit. Team spirit's massive. 
I, I, I honestly it. couldn't wait to, you know, driving in the morning, I couldn't wait to get out. Oh, it's so we had a, so we could have a carry on. That's right. It was fantastic. And and I mentioned it on Thursday uh, when when we were, we were at the parents. One of the things I think players miss out on today is we used to get on the bus at Anfield and travel to the training ground, and that half an hour was just a carry on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was it, so you looked forward to it. It was just a carry on, and, and the, now. Okay, it's great to have the old training, the brand new training centres, they have the food and they have this and that. But that half hour, each way, by the way. Yeah. So twice a day, you're stuck in a bus yeah. with the apprentices, with the reserves yeah. and the first team boys. Everybody at the club is together. So you, so for an hour a day total, you're all together in a bus. A piss take was ridiculous. It was incredible. It was great fun. You could, couldn't wait to get in in the morning and have a laugh. The only thing that was missing was the... The Budweiser, because you sound that quick, didn't you? Jesus <laughs> we have another Budweiser, please. We're going to bar. sort that out. We're going to sort that out momentarily. But before we go like into the past a little bit, Stephen, about I don't like history. that momentarily, but... <laughs> <laughs> you want imminent. What? Yeah. I'll sort it out. I'll ask the question, let you answer, right. and i get you to be in the meantime. Perfect. So obviously it's been quite an event for summer for, for Liverpool in the lead-up of the new season, which started well for all intents and purposes. But with the kind of let's say, somewhat surprising departures to Saudi Arabia, the last minute uh, rumors around Salah potentially leaving. Like, what did you make of the of the summer period at Liverpool Football Club and how are we set up for for the season? Well, I think the two signings are fantastic. Uh, McAllister, obviously, we all know about because of his time at Brighton. Seamless coming in the team. Yeah. But I think the surprise has been Zlobber's life. I mean, the guy has been absolutely yeah. silky. Mm. I mean, what a player. Every single thing he does is is immaculate. And he makes it look easy. Yeah. Now, the, the, the thing is not to be... You know, it's four games. Yeah. And the guy has been flawless in four games. Mm. So I think it's a little early to start sticking a halo over his head. <laughs> but I tell you what, if he keeps doing what he's doing... Wow, this guy's absolutely going to be a legend at Liverpool, and hopefully he's going to be here for a good ten year. As far as as far as Hendo uh, and Fabinho going, you know, I think we're all looking at last season and thinking, what's the problem in the middle of the park? And the question was always, is it bad form or have the boys passed the best? And, and Jurgen Klopp's not getting rid of Hendo and Fabinho unless they pass the best. So. I, it had to be done. And actually, if you think about it, the Saudi money has come at a good time. Yeah. Because you're able to go and spend money on the likes of McAllister yeah. and Zlobis like without making a huge dent on what money you have from the transfer market anyway. And if you're talking about two guys who you think are past the best, who are not going to be playing as many games, then it's way easier to, to move them along getting a good amount of money for them. Everybody's happy. Well, apart from Hendo, it seems. Everybody's <laughs> happy. Uh, and then you can you can make new signings. So I think the business in the middle of the park, I think Endo as well. I've seen a fair bit of Endo in Germany. Mm. He's not flashy. He's, he's not going to be... Well, not, I'm not going to be sitting in bed clapping like I did with Trent Alexander, mm. but the guy's going to do a job, and that is get the ball and give it. And then defend. And, and defend. And up your, your, your centre backs. But whilst we're on that, on that, I want you to really talk about this because it's your forte. Obviously, our defending, and we've got four defenders. Now, obviously, Van Dyke's been hit with a 100 grand fine and another match which we knew was going to happen. Yeah. You know, it should happen to other, other, other players that, that are far worse than him, but it does. We've made an example of him 100 grand, all right. That's it's a lot much. of dough, but it's 100 grand's too much. Yeah. Ridiculous. Ah. But. Where do you see? I think the next stage now, the midfield is nearly sorted. I think we yeah. do. We do. I have to wait and see the defensive midfield player. Another one may come in, or Basicic may, may, may evolve. But where the defence is concerned, that's going to be the next step. Because we're up top, and I'm sure we're going to talk about Mo Salah mm -hmm. down the line. But defensively, how do you see it? Defensively, so, right now, I'm stuck in between making. In the next 12 months. In the next 12 next, months. You know, going forward, going the next year. After the next, obviously, next year. and. The way to be honest, Sean, I'm looking at the next six months. I think, yeah, I think yeah. because because we've had 
we've had a couple of seasons where the defence has gone from being completely and totally and utterly rock solid to being vulnerable. Yeah. And I think we're coming... The time where it's been vulnerable has has lasted too long. And when it lasts too long, it then becomes a question of, well, there's only two things can happen. Either there needs to be more work done as a unit, mm -hmm. or you have to start looking at the person in the mm -hmm. jersey. Mm -hmm. And I think we're coming close to looking at the person in the jersey, yeah. to be quite honest. Because you can't... As, as good as Liverpool look going forward, they'll score goals, you, you can't... You can't win the Premier League or anything else if you're having to score three or four goals because you only lose two or three. You can't do that. So Jürgen's got the toughest job of the lot. Trent at right back. Trent with the ball at his feet. It's fantastic defensively. We know every man and his dog knows that it's not his forte, but they have been able to compensate for it previously. Canati and Van Dijk and Robertson on paper is, what's the problem? Yeah. But they're not, they're not performing the way they used to. So I'm not sitting here saying that one of them needs to go or they all need to go. or what. I'm, not, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that for Jurgen Klopp, it's coming to a point where he has to decide whether somebody does have to go or whether they can fix it. So that's that's where I'm with the defence. I, I totally agree with that. Because I think Matt, Matt Tip will go next summer. He's in his last year of his contract now. Which is fair enough. So he, yeah, yeah, he's. We, I think we've got more out of him than we thought we were going to get. Yeah, no so, question. Yeah, he's, he's been a good servant. Yeah. You know, last year I'm looking. Last year I mean, we struggled, but obviously because because the midfield didn't help. We know that. Like you, you yeah. know, it was in front. They were, they were, we were culpable too many times. So yeah, no, I do agree with that. And what about what about Mo Salah? What did you do? You think Liverpool did the right thing, digging their heels in and just saying not for sale at any price? No, I think everybody's got a price. I think you got to look after the club, you know. And and I've said it on on the show I work on with ESPN a lot of times recently because it's it's a question that everybody's asking. Yeah. You know, when, you know when, when Ron Yates left and Ancient John left and Keegan left and yeah. Kenny stopped and all those stopped. Steve, Stevie J. And Fowler stopped and all. I mean, I, I can keep f throwing the names out. No one's bigger than the club. Nobody's bigger than the club. And if you're going to get, I, I, I said 150 mil, but if they're offering 200, I think you take it. But even if you haven't got time to replace him. But you've got, I think you've got replacements. This... If there was a, if there was ever a time where you could let one a, a, an important player go because of the money to take care of the club and the team going forward, it's now because you've still got four talented players. I mean, to ben me, Dope, Ben Dope, by the way, he's, got, he's, he's a good player. Right, so I, 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 don't, I, I haven't seen much of the job. Right. Yeah, very, yeah, very good mate. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, no, yeah. no, I haven't seen much of him, but. You know, so instead of having five for three, you've now got four for three. But but again, it also it also may be good for Nunez because I think Nunez needs a, a run of games, and it looks like he's not going to get it right now for some reason. But if Salah was to go, and you get two hundred mil, I take the two hundred mil and I say to Nunez, right, you play centre forward for the next ten games unless you're injured or get sent off or whatever it is. And then, and then you really see what we've got. Because right now, we all understand he's talented, he's raw. You don't want anything to do with this guy. You don't want to play against Nunes. If I'm playing centre-back, I would play against Jota. I'd rather play against Gakpo. If Nunes is starting, I'm like, oh, God, I'm in for a tough time today. Not that, and that's all due respect to, 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 to Gakpo and, and to Jota. Yeah. They're good players. Which I have no problem if one of them plays if Salah goes, they, but they, Nunes has they to play. play. They play like they come off and war that way. It's when they're going against that way and going into you and beating you in the air, and, and, and that's what Nunes gives you. And I totally agree. He has to be given a run of games now. We have to stick with my 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 philosophy, my forty on it is we've got to stick with him now for the next 10, 12. Unless he goes on a drought and we lose games, he change it, but that won't happen. Uh, Lewis. Um, you've got Mo and him for the next, and, and, and he will develop. He'll score a lot of goals, 
But my stance on, on Mo, a little bit different to Steve. I, I Mo, Mo Seller now, and I have to say this because obviously it's the pod, the, me podcast. We've got the Kohino diamond, which is the biggest diamond in the world. We have that. The best Muslim player of all time. At the moment, the best Muslim player. He's 31. He can play in this league till he's 35. He can play in their league till he's 40 years of age. He's so super, super fit. He, they can have him and they will have him for years to come. He's worth ridiculous. I'm telling you now, when he left on his contract at the end of this season, he'll be worth 250 million. You'll get 250 million. That's how much he's valued and worth out there. Not just for his football reasons, but other reasons as well. And that's only my philosophy on it. So I think and I hope Liverpool don't devalue at the moment because we haven't got anyone who can just go in there. We keep them until the end of the season or even maybe January, whatever the score is there, unless you've got someone to come in. Liverpool can then go bang, bang and get two of the best players on the planet, underground beach, whatever it is. And I don't know where they are at the moment, but that's my, my that's my slant on the, on, on the way he stands at the moment. I like, I, think I like the shout about wait to January because maybe by January we'll figure out where we are, you know, whether... Number one, hopefully, we are Are we going to contend for the Premier League? And if we're not, and that huge offer's still there in January, maybe you decide then you go, right, we, we need to change something. Yeah. And to do it, we need some money, and this is how we do it. Will you let your actually so, have, but, but if we're competing, months. then you keep them. And then hopefully what you're talking about is still there at the end of the season yeah. or further forward. We just need them, the months to get, get a replacement. Yeah. A top, top replacement, so it doesn't devalue our squad. Right. This is the Oldwood Podcast with John Aldridge, Peter, I still don't know his second name properly, <laughs> Stephen Nichol and James Pease. And you're welcome to, to stay for the next episode and even the next part of the show. <laughs> <laughs>let me let me take you back to october 1981 you're you're 19 years of age you're playing for air united in scotland and bob paisley signs you for three hundred thousand pound what was what was that period like for you that's a lot of money then (laughs) you think about it yeah that was a right for you bob then you know so it's uh, it must have been a lot of pressure mate can you say that again? <laughs> <laughs> you can't remember what was that. You were, you were playing, um, well, I, that'd have been part time, with it? You, when you were a labourer yeah. as well. Yeah, I was the worst brickies labourer you've ever met in your life. Was your odd carrier? Aye, uh, uh, I, I used to. I used to find places to hide that weren't there. Yeah, yeah. They'd never find <laughs> no, me no, in a no. building site. So <laughs> I was useless, <laughs> and I only got the job because Air United, one of the directors, was uh, on the board of the. The building firm. That's how I got the job. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, as far as the football, we trained Tuesday, and Thursday, uh, and played on a Saturday. Obviously, we didn't have a midweek game. So yeah, part time, but it was great fun, and and I was lucky that, again, you know, John was talking earlier about the dressing room. The dressing room that I went into was fantastic because there were two or three younger guys, myself, uh, a guy called Robert Connor who went on to play for Aberdeen and uh, in Scotland as well. But we had some old heads, some guys who'd been round the round the teams, played in played in the in the first division, because we were we were in the Scottish second division basically, uh, and so it was a great mix and it was a great time, and we actually had a good team, and so we were we were sitting either first or second in our league, and so you know when you're winning, it's always easier, but at the same time when you got a good group, it's great fun. So that's what I was doing. Uh, I was just having fun. I was playing. I was 19. Not a worry in the world. Just go and play football. You can't, I mean, what else do you want? Did you know that Liverpool had been watching you? Absolutely no idea. This is back in the day when Liverpool acted classic Liverpool. Nobody ever knew. A guy called Jeff Twentyman, yeah. who was the, yeah. the chief scout at the time. I mean, yeah. if you get a chance to look at... Look at um, Jeff's family have, have, have brought a bit, 
Yeah. Brought a book, brought a book out. Yeah, it's, cool. all, it's fantastic. fantastic. You read yeah. all the names and all the scouting. And as far as Jeff is concerned with me, he he never got a ticket from the club. He always paid. He had his scouts in the west of Scotland, uh, who obviously kept them. But you never knew what Liverpool would do. And the other thing Liverpool did as well, it wasn't just about what you did on the field. They wanted to know what you were like off the field, what kind of character you were. All of those things yeah. Jeff Twentyman looked into, and it was important. And when I got to Liverpool, it's easy for me to sit now and look back and understand it, because I didn't at the time. But I went into a dressing room at Liverpool that was together, that felt the same as the one I had just left. And but, it's, but, but also you had massive Scottish, Scottish influence, uh, Jock Hanson, Kenny, yeah. Siri in particular, you know, lots, which must have helped you some way or form, yeah? Absolutely, big yeah. time. Yeah, big time. No, they, look, they looked after me. They, they wound me up and took the mic yeah. <laughs> relentlessly. <laughs> but, but, they, but, but they looked after me. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it was huge for me just, just to be transplanted from Air United, a little club in terms of world football, most people wouldn't, wouldn't have any clue to go to the European champions in Liverpool and for it to seem as though it was all it was normal must seem crazy to somebody listening to me right now but that's what it felt like to me I felt as though I went from one dressing room into the same dressing room the only difference was better players European champions bigger expectations but again most importantly a dressing room mm. that you just wanted to be in. I mean, that's that's huge for anybody. Yeah. Uh, and, and your digs, which is a stone throw from down Anfield Hotel. Yeah, can Hotel you imagine Anfield. that? Can you imagine? Just up here. Yeah, we can just you? drove on the way in. You showed me the that? house just where the, around the corner where the Bobby Firmino mural is. Well, I, I stayed in two places in Anfield Road. The first one was my digs when I came on me on and I stayed with the Pikes. Um, Bunty and Ed, they used to babysit for us later on with kids and the whole thing. And then we, when I moved out of there, me and Eleanor had a flat on Anfield Road. We had the top flat, there was people below us, and we shared the bathroom, shower and the whole thing. I mean, can you imagine today <laughs> signing somebody <laughs> and saying, yeah, we're going to put you in digs. <laughs> we're a family. They'd be like, hey, what are you on about? But again, it was great. It, it felt normal at the time. Absolutely. And then uh, the double winning team, 85, 86, I must confess, a little bit before my time. I was born in 84. Just mm -hmm. thought I'd rub it in, John. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just uh, had the paper round in your gym. <laughs> 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 anyway, Kenny uh, was now uh, the gaffer. You yep. didn't play with him anymore. You actually played for him in a, in a, in a sense. And uh, just to top things off, you won the league just ahead of Everton, won the cup. Uh, beating Everton yep. so that must have been quite a mind-blowing season for you well around Christmas time we were actually struggling man. we were a bit I think it was about nine points behind them mm. ten points maybe even and we had 14 games left so at that time it was looking like we were going to be second and then we were going to win the league and then we went on an incredible run. We won 13 and drew one of the last 14 games. Uh, and they had a, they had two or three problems uh, and dropped points. And so basically going into the last game of the season, Chelsea away, we got ourselves in a position where we had to win to win the league. Can I just stop you? And you don't know this. But on that Wednesday night, before you played Leicester. People played Leicester. Did I? Everton came to Oxford. And I was doing the time, lads, we've got to win it. <laughs> I'm saying to the lads, please win it. For anyway, because long story short, little lads Phillips, me, 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 busy, me, scored with about three minutes to go. Um, we won 1 0. The lads, we all went out. They took me out into town because <laughs> actually gave Liverpool an opportunity. Because Liverpool beat Leicester that night, didn't they? Well, I remember the crowd. I remember the, the, the roar. Because, you know, when you get to the last the two or three, radios on, yeah. when it's really close and you get to the last two or three games of the season, the roars have got a different tone to them. Mm. And as soon as they had scored, this roar came from nowhere. Because we had got ourselves ahead. And I tell you what, listen, this team could play. 
But I'll tell you what, it could shut the game down for fun. We could we could kill games, keep the ball, just slow it down. I mean, you talk about professional, big time. And so when we were ahead and then we hear this roar and you instinctively know the tone of it and you're like, right. And i got to tell you, very few times did I ever lose concentration in a game. But I remember for a couple of minutes just, just losing it a little thinking about it because you recognise the roar and then hey, hey, get back into it. Otherwise, otherwise something's going to happen. But yeah, phenomenal. Remember it we, well. We, we still had to go to Chelsea away. Well, we still had to go and win the Chelsea it? away, yeah. Aye, yeah, which because. wasn't easy. But again, got ourselves ahead. Surprise, surprise. Kenny scores a goal. And once we go ahead again, we we know what we're all about and we just shut it down. Mm-hmm. Talk them. I mean, professional. Completely different to when Aldo and Barnsley and Peter came and, and we Roy. It was a completely different way of playing. But that side, the way we played then, I mean, totally professional. 100%. And how do you feel like the relationship sort of between Everton and Liverpool has developed? So back then, um, it's it's become a little bit feisty, certainly mm. between supporters. The last few derbies, maybe it's also because Everton is doing is in a very, 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 very difficult situation, as we all know, on and off the pitch. And that might have something to do with it. But how it's, was it back then versus today? It was, a, it was a friendly derby in them days. It was a friendly derby, you have to say. It was a lot of respect. respect. Yeah, yeah. It did. Unfortunately, and for the city, as great as our city is, it hurt me to say, see what's what's evolving and what's happening. Yeah. You know, horrible, the horrible. It's, it's just it's not the way it used to be, unfortunately. I don't know where it's going to go. I can't see getting any better, that's what I think. No. no. Uh, not this season, from mm. when we look at what yeah. has happened so far at yeah. the beginning. So would you socialise with the Everton boys back Absolutely in the day? Not, yeah. No. 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 <laughs> no, no, it was it was it was weird. Because I mean there was three or four places you would go, snobs, uh, the Conti. Um I always love the tune. <laughs> right, so you got it was all the same places, yeah. and so we'd we'd be in there and they'd be in there as well. Different, but they'd be over there and we'd be over there. Like different nights in the in them days, like a Monday night was like told all, wasn't it? it told was, all. Hi. Tuesday was that was the continental night, and then Wednesday night was the one over in Birkenhead. Oh, you call it? And then they all had different nights, so that the, the in crowd would go. All every night go out hey, all these the places. Cookie, and, and the coconut, coconut grove. Coconut grove was every night one of the things. <laughs> yeah. The cokey, yeah. So yeah, so no. It, it it was just no. It was like hello. Yeah, respectful, that but that was it. And yeah. that was it. I've got I've got to say though, people won't know. I'll certainly So we won the league. We beat Chelsea last game. Kenny scores a goal, one 0 Thank you. Cup final. FA Cup final as in Everton. Now, some genius at the council in Liverpool, this board, or whoever it was, came up with the idea that after the cup final, we'd come back to the city on the Sunday and both teams would be paraded around the city. Now, that that would have been a good... that That would have worked had we... Had we won a trophy and they won a trophy. Yeah, yeah. But what didn't work is us winning both trophies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I can't. Been, yeah. and, Funny and by the way, not on not only so we met at the airport on the Sunday. We obviously had a great night. <laughs> I'm not so sure what theirs was like. We met at the airport and both teams got on two planes mixed up. So half the Everton team and half our team got on one plane and then half the same half got on the other plane. So I'm sat on the plane with Gary Lineker and his messy sitting over there. And there's me and Elna here. And then there's like Big Al and his messies and then there's there's Neville and his messies. I mean, it was like... And of course, we, we're like that. We're all over the continent, aren't you? We're sat there like, we're sat there like oh, death so warmed up. For them, isn't it, when you think about it? So then we got off the plane. <laughs> it's peak. There's two buses. There's a bus over there with all kinds of trophies on it. And then there's a bus <laughs> over there that's just a bus. So it's just a bus. It's just a bus. <laughs> 
<laughs> and a dog. And a dog. So of course we, we all get all we all we all and the big red one has got all the silver we're shining, you can't see for all the glistening and everything. And then we're front we're first. We're front and centre. And you got this tugboat behind us. And they're all like that. Ah. Now f- fair play to the Evertonians, oh. they turned out as well to wave to their team. But I just can't imagine how they <laughs> felt. Oh, Wait, a, again. That's horrendous, by yeah. the way. Yeah. The oh, players yeah. and can't can't that's just so, can't. so hard. Oh, wow. Well. Some balloon come up with that idea. <laughs> Some balloon. <laughs> and yeah. it was a balloon, yeah. by the way. I've got a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done, Charlie. That sounds great. Let's do that. <laughs> So 85-86, obviously an unforgettable season. Kenny's taken over as, as manager. Just going back, to your breakthrough year was obviously 83-84. Yeah. What, what was Joe Fagan like to play for? Because it always feels like in Liverpool's history, maybe the achievements of that year don't get the recognition it deserves. The fact you won yeah. the league, Aye. the League Cup Aye. and the European yeah. Cup. Good shout that, James. Yeah. It's like, um, and, yeah, and especially what was that like being part of that achievement in Rome? Do you know, the, the, the move from Bob to Joe was seamless as it was from Joe to Kenny. I mean, it was seamless. It was just a continuation of Shanks to Bob to to Joe Mm. to Kenny. Basically, those four just, they were were a mirror image of of the whole thing, the whole club. So nothing changed. Although the managers changed, nothing changed within the club. We still trained the same. We still had the same philosophies. We still had the same culture. We still had a great time. Nothing changed, and so it's it's hard. It's hard to give enough praise because we all saw what happened with Man United, for example, when Fergie left. Mm. So that tells you how difficult it is when a standard is set and a culture is set. How difficult it is to continue it. Mm. But yeah, Liverpool did. But yeah, Shankly did it. Paisley did it. Joe did it, Kenny did it. I mean, that's all you need. Just look at look at Man United after Fergie and look at Liverpool after Shankly. It yeah. tells you how great yeah. those three guys were. Which does back the question, and it's entirely not in the script, but uh, what Liverpool is going to do one day when the big man leaves? Because in terms of, there's something to be said for continuation, for continuity, I mean. Well, yeah. And uh, I do, I mean, I personally feel as much as some fans have, in the past, criticized Jürgen for holding on to some players for a little bit too long. I think the summer showed with the departures of several players that he held dearly, that he can uh, identify when the right moment is. But how do we move on yeah, from Jürgen? I think we've got a bit gone? of time, you know, because obviously the way Jürgen is, what you see is what you get. And he knows he, he wants to develop it, this new squad that, before he goes. Uh, and this is the start of it. Um, so I, I do think, you know, is he, what's his contract? Another three, is it? Two, three? 2026, three? yeah, three yeah. years. Yeah. He's, he's honest, man. He, he, will, he will see it through. And then what happens then? You might get your team Germany out the shit where they are at the moment. But anyway. <laughs> we we I mean, need him sooner than that to Germany, but I'd rather have him in Liverpool. By that time, he will, he will have us in a good place. And look, look, things don't stay forever. And it's, it's you know, after Shanks, we were all. Bob Paisley and you know things happen and it's going to be a, a hard day but you've got to prepare that and I'm sure the great man himself will have Liverpool prepared for when that happens personally but let's hope let's hope that because John said it earlier or it might have been the other night because you know together yeah. the other night Klopp's Klopp's one of those guys that we've just been talking about you know, Liverpool said a lot of managers, but there are certain managers that are that are that are just Liverpool managers. Yeah, and Klopp one hundred percent is in the same Six the boxes, the same mould. Yeah, as the Shanks, as the Paisleys, as Gio, as Kenny. No, no question. Unfortunately, between Kenny and Jurgen, we haven't been able to to repeat that sort of character. And right now, I got to tell you that you really depress me talking about 
What do we do? <laughs> I mean, seriously. I think that's I mean, a simple that makes, answer. <laughs> that makes me want another pint. Thinking about it. I, I mentioned two, so the other one is yours as well. But Steve, for Hold on. don't be taking any it. praise. Two was my idea. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I think there's a simple answer. I think if we like the continuity and what we've built and continuing, then despite last season's um, sort of pressure that built particularly on him as well, I, in my humble opinion, Pat Linders is still there to uh, be a contender for the job uh, when the day comes. Well, it's, it's, the long, it's long time up for him in the future, but you know, he used to do it from within, didn't he? Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, it's a tough one for, that, for anyone, you know. Absolutely. How do you, how do you follow? How yeah. do you follow? But whether Pep's up to that, we don't know, do we? We don't know. Long time, long time go. Hopefully, until that happens. And you never know, things change. His mindset might change, you know, and I say, well, do you know what? It's going well. I might have another few more years. You well, know? did that, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's hope he does that. Yeah. We just need Ola to step up to the plate and tell him <laughs> what, what to do and he'll yeah. stay for a little longer. What about, yeah, what, talk about managers. What about, obviously, we're coming to the end of the show soon, but, but Roman City took over, obviously big mates, you know, with Scotland and Liverpool. Yeah. Obviously, we all know <laughs> we tried to change things too, far too quickly. What's your slant on it? Well, I'll tell you what, there's two things for me that are key in this. And, and I hear a lot of people saying that. Well, they try to change things too quickly, right? Graham did two things. Sorry, Graham did one thing in particular that all Liverpool managers had done, pretty much. And that was spot and buy the best talent that was around in England at the time. Mm. You know, Liverpool did that. We did it with you. We did it with Ray. We did it with Barnsley. We did it with Peter. Yeah. So Graham did that with Mark Wright, mm -hmm. uh, with Paul Stewart, with Michael Thomas. You know, he did the same thing as the manager previously had done. So, you know, you can't fault him for doing that. Okay. But what hamstrung him in particular was they changed, in, in Europe, they changed the rules to where you could only have three foreign players on the field at any time. Yeah in a European game. Now, if you think of the 85, 86 double winning team, there wasn't an Englishman in the side. There was none. <laughs> so everybody says, oh, Graham made too many. But Graham had no choice because everybody was a foreigner. Ray Howard was a foreigner. He was Irish. Well, he's Scott. We know he's Scottish. <laughs> so, Steve Staunton. Yeah. I mean, you just go through the list. The majority of the players were foreigners. So he had no choice. If, and Liverpool certainly have to be an A force in Europe. So unless Liverpool says, Yo, you know what, all we're going to do is make sure we win domestically, I'm not changing the team to win in Europe. But that's not what's, that, that, that wasn't a, a, an option. So as much as he might have wanted to make changes, he had no choice. So he was pretty much hamstrung from the start. And he's unfortunate that, again, buying the best talent in England previously had worked, but this time it didn't work for whatever reason. Mm. Plus, he had to make all the changes. Mm. And we ended up where we were, and, and unfortunately, he lost his job. He still won the FA Cup. <laughs> I mean, he still won a trophy. Yeah. But, but there was, what, 90, 91 other teams in the, in the country wanted to win. So, yeah, that's... Some people haven't say, seen on suicide, so that's the first time I've heard that. So mm. it's quite very interesting. But mm. well, we we can't we can't stop uh, the podcast without going on to your your managerial career, because right. um, you were the longest serving manager. One time I was, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've done my own work on that, by the way. Ten years. <laughs> the ten, I knew it was ten years. Like right. So ten years of manager. Have you put a rinse on there? Because you're not great. <laughs> Look at me. Oh, that's the gel. If I take the gel off. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Okay, okay. Coaching's you hard. Find you enjoy it? Well, you you yeah. coach Stonks. You know what it's like. Um, initially, it was fun. It was fantastic. But it kind of boils down. I was, I was fortunate in a lot of ways that I got a job where we actually had some good players but they hadn't been managed properly. 
and they were kind of lost. And so when I came in, I kind of went old school, went back to all the things that we did. And it was all about the team and they loved it. And the fact that we actually did have some good players meant that we ended up doing well because my first 10 games, I only won three. I think we won three, drew two and lost the rest. You know, so it wasn't it wasn't this instant success. I remember a guy, I remember a guy after about seven or eight games saying, Are you going to resign? I remember a press conference again when I'm going to resign. And I looked him, I looked him straight in the face and I went, No, I don't do that. And then we ended up in the final at the end of the season. Only because the team came together and we had some good players. And then after that, I was lucky that in America at the time, the draft was a major way of getting players in. And at the time, I think I had an advantage that some of the other guys in the US didn't have. It's spotting talent, different things. Not, not, and again, it comes from being at Liverpool. Yeah. Certain things that you see, guys that have got certain things. Absolutely. Not everything, yeah. but certain things. Yeah, you do. And then you start, can, well, I can put him in there yeah. and he'll be great in there. Just little things. Not like, not complete players, just yeah. little bits. So whenever we used to go to, I had the, I had the most incredible, um, at the draft, I had the most incredible, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Success rate of draftees playing in the first team straight away. The teams used to go, how do you do this? But I just you saw see something. It. You see it. And I, and I had, I thought, right, I can just put that in there. Clint Dempsey was the perfect example. Okay. Nobody. Clint Dempsey wasn't, because in America, they all talk, they talk a lot. And all the agents are going around going, who do you like? Who do you like? Who do you like? And all these managers used to tell them, oh, I like them, I like them. And they come to me, well, who do you like? I'm like, eh, eh. like Paisley. Eh, eh. And they go, what about him? Do you like him? I'd be like, oh, he's all right. Do you like him? Oh, he's all right. And I used to do stupid things. So I'd have a piece of paper at the draft and I'd my own little thing. You know, if there was somebody I liked, I would just draw a little circle with a darker circle in the middle. And only I knew was it was an eye, keep an eye on that. Because people, because if you, sometimes you would leave your papers lying around, people would be like, oh. and I'd be, like, if they looked at mine, I had like arrows, hammers, I had all kinds of nonsense. <laughs> and they, I could see them. I could, I actually left it one day on the table when I went to the toilet and I came back and I saw somebody giving it a rap. And I was like, hey. And then I thought about it, I thought, he must have been going, what the? What's that? <laughs> What's all this nonsense? Hammers and eyeballs and... He must have thought, oh, what is this? But it was my own wee code that yeah, I knew. Yeah, yeah. So, so for... I'll tell you what, for... So the Revs basically had never been in the playoffs before I got there. From 96, I got there in 2000, 2001. They'd never been in the playoffs, never won a thing, nothing. And then for the next eight years... We played in four finals. Um, we played in another four semi-finals. We won the Open Cup. Uh, we won the Super League tournament, which were the four best US teams, the four best Mexican teams. Um, and it was great. And all these teams, all these other teams had money though. We didn't have any money. And as, as happens, eventually, it runs out. You can't keep plucking diamonds out. Yeah, you've got to see the time scale, don't you? Ah, you can't keep plucking diamonds out. And so the last two years I was there, so for eight years, we never missed the playoffs. That was a record at the time. But the last two years, I'll tell you what, it was hard work. We had no money to buy players. I was buying, I was, I was bringing in, I had a lot of young American guys, and I was bringing in older European guys, like D Dabo. From Manchester City. Okay. Yeah. Um, Gareth Jankowskis had played at Hearts, who was a big centre forward. I mean, I was bringing people like that, but they couldn't stay, couldn't keep them fit. And I'll give you a great example of how, where we reached. We played Philadelphia Union away. We were 4 0 up at half time. 
And to get into the coach's room, you walk through the dressing room and then into the coach's room. And I go in the dressing room, and of course, the lads are all like, well, they're all good there. And I got in the dressing room and shut the door. And I went, I turned to Miles, a guy called Steve Miles, who was my, my assistant, and Remy Roy, who was my goalie coach. And I went, this ain't over, by the way. Because mm. I knew what I had yeah. wasn't good enough. And by the way, we drew four all and we hung on. We drew four all. I think that was my last season, actually. And by the end of the season, I was driving in and I didn't want to go there. Mm. I, I was driving in, I was getting to the stadium and I'm like, I don't want to go here. It was horrible. It was awful. I was on blood pressure tablets. Never, I've, never, I've never been on a tablet in my life. I was on blood pressure tablets. That's how bad it was. Because Saturday night when you've lost... Is the worst night. Oh, of the tell week. me about it, yeah. Oh, the tell worst me. night of the oh, week. Tell me You're up all night thinking about it. Yeah. And add to the fact. It's a good that, excuse to have about four or five pints that though, isn't oh, it? To make you sleep, I, isn't it? At least. <laughs> and the worst thing as well is that you can handle it when you're winning because it's a 24 yes. 7 job. You're thinking about it constantly. The phone's going constantly. You spend more time as a coach. Sorting out other things other than the football as well. It's, it's just all encompassing. But when you're winning, it's great. When you're losing, it's not. And I got the call. Can we come and see the owners? And I knew where it was. And I was like, ah. oh, thank God. <laughs> so I go in the room. So there's Robert Kraft and Jonathan. Um, and we sat down. And uh, Robert, who's the dad, Started, he goes, you know, we've really hit. And I went, stop. Yeah. I says, hey, don't worry about that. We've had a great time. We've really enjoyed being here. It's been great. It's time to move on. Don't forget about it. I'm good. And that was it. And he just smiled. We shook hands. And off, off I popped. Paid your page up in full. Well, the best, that's the thing. So Robert said, he said, obviously, we'll pay up your contract. Yeah. Right. I only had two weeks left on my contract. <laughs> 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 oh, so oh, God. So oh, generous. So generous. <laughs> if, ever, if ever so you wish they got rid of me two years earlier. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll pay up your contract. I'm sitting there going, I'm sitting there going, there's only two weeks left. So did you know then you were done with management? We you we, ever we tempted well, in no. the years since? To, no, to I go didn't. I, no, I didn't. I did because I always said to Eleanor, because when we were struggling, so Eleanor and I used to, uh, we used to do a talking in the bath. So we had a big tub. So we used to fill it up and we'd sit in the bath. I'd be up one end, she'd be up the other end. Water obviously overflowing at the end. <laughs> the two, <laughs> the two of us, isn't it? <laughs> and I kept saying to her, because she's going, oh, well, the team's not doing. I said, look, I'll get another, I've been here 10 years, done a great job, I'll get another job. Yeah. Somebody else will want me. So I was like pretty confident. <laughs> Holy small. <laughs> On that note, thinking about bumping oh, it in the tub with his missus. <laughs> this is John Aldridge and all those podcasts. Oh, God, yeah. With the great neck home he made. Bumper, oh, chips, yeah. call them what you want. James Peace and pizza from the Ota Landfield. One day I'll get his second name right. <laughs> Steve, the, the one thing from, from my point of view that I was interested in, with you having lived in the US now for so long and doing your punditry and everything, and obviously looking now what China did for a little while, now what Saudi is doing, which feels to me like more of a, uh, that it will last a bit longer than China, but they bring in big, big, big names. And amongst all of that period of all these players going there, there's one mega notable person that went to the MLS maybe somewhat surprising, um, that's messy. Yeah. Um, so I just wondered from your point of view, um, assuming that you have um, watched him a little bit over there, like what do you think his impact 
is over there, not just for that club. Long or, term as well. Yeah, long term as well, but also for the MLS or, or how the how the Americans see soccer, you know. Well, the impact is absolutely incredible. I mean, you could get tickets on the black market for his first game uh, to Miami for 10 grand. 10 grand. So that's the impact that he's had. You know, it's kind of following on from the, the Beckhams, the Ibrahimovic's, and all it does is brings more awareness around the world to MLS. Mm. I mean, that's basically what he's doing. And, and I think what Messi's done different to all the other, shall we say, older players who have gone to Saudi. You can't lie. You can't throw anybody. You go for the money. What Messi's decided is he's more interested in his family because if you go to Saudi, it's a different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. If you go to the US, it's a different lifestyle, but it's a lifestyle that's catered more towards your family. And he's chosen that over the money. Now, you can argue that he's got enough, but you can also argue that the majority of the players that have gone there, you know, Ronaldo and, and others, probably should have enough money to last them anyway. You know? <laughs> Just about. <laughs> you could, know? could so, argue that. Yeah, very so controversial, yeah. Steve. Well, so Messi's chosen family over, over money. Mm. And I think what he's finding out he, I, I would guarantee, I would bet anybody that as far as professional satisfaction, he's getting way more satisfaction out of playing than anybody in Saudi Arabia. No question. That's a good point, yeah. No question. That's a good yeah. point. No, no, I, I, can, I can see that. I mean, we might have the opportunity to ask someone the question one day who follows the Saudi league a little bit more and see what their impressions are on some of the players that went there. But yeah. I think the deal that Messi seems to have cut himself, including some sort of ownership of the club as well, right? I think it's not just uh, money, right? From what I heard, it sounds well, like... Well, to do with the TV, Apple has just taken over MLS. ESPN, I work for, had uh, uh, MLS up until last year, mm -hmm. uh, and Apple decided Apple. to take it over. Yeah. So they're streaming it on Apple, uh, and he, the deal he did with Inter Miami wasn't just with Inter Miami, but he did a lot of other deals with MLS, and one of those deals with getting money from Apple, because clearly him being here, more people will use Apple, the, the streaming wow. app. Sure. Which is wow. fair enough. Yeah. That's, that's quite mega, to be fair. Well, I mean, it is. Yeah, you know, that so, leads, no one knows. That yeah, is, so his, his, his people have done their homework and they've, they've, they've covered every avenue. And actually, at the end of the day, they've covered every avenue, but everybody wins. And right now, everybody's winning big time, including into Miami on the field. Mm -hmm. Because right now, I think they've only lost one game. Uh, they're trying to, they were so far back before he came, they were the worst team in MLS. Yeah. But since he's come, I don't know. Ten, Did that not coincide them. with Phil Neville leaving as well, by <laughs> chance? You know, there must be some, there must be that Everton charm still somehow like playing a role, you know? Yeah, that's a shame, isn't it? Yeah, just <laughs> terrible, terrible. Got it. Got it. Moving on, James, moving on. <laughs> Steve, we, we couldn't let you go without talking about your diet, which was legendary. Um, Hold on while I finish this. What diet? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now, I want to check whether this is true or not. This is what someone sent me about what you would usually consume the day before a game. Sausage and mash for lunch, two bags of crisps and a can of Coke snack, fish, chips and beans for your tea, and then a club sandwich with a pot of tea, a pint of Coke and six bags of crisps. And you've missed one now, the Penthouse magazine. Mm. <laughs> I've room with him. Oh, oh yes. yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I, is that still the shit? Oh, yes. <laughs> is it? Yeah, you know. It's true, yeah. it's true, yeah. yeah. What's the Penthouse? Oh. Well, it's one of them anyway, well, wasn't it? I mean, let's stick with it. Let's go, Fiesta. Yeah. You know. All the younger listeners you know, were... Reader's wife, that... you know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd never recognised any of them. <laughs> is that vaguely about right? That that list of... There is nothing vague about that. <laughs> it is absolutely spot on. <laughs> Um, and what yeah. about the pre-match meal? On the day of a game, what would you have as your pre-match? Uh, pre-match was a little different. I was a way more sensible. Um, later on, when all the scientists started uh, appearing in football, I would have spaghetti bolognese. 
Because he passed, it was good for you. Know, that's <laughs> but before that, I mean, I used to have all kinds of stuff, boiled eggs, soup, steak. I mean, we kind yeah. of, be, it was kind of basically, what was he like, sir? And you'd be like, ooh, what do you fancy the day? I'll tell you one thing, of that, that I, after the game, you get it after we won, because we used to win all the time, especially at Anfield. On the bus. In the Anfield, but in, right, straight away, in shower, whatever. I've never seen anyone as quick get in and out of the shower and to the bar <laughs> as quick as him. Unbelievable. He was in that watch. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, swear, no one ever beat him to the bar anytime, unless he was injured, maybe. Do you know what? I laugh now. Do you know what after the games now? You got other players, you see them all walking around and clapping and they all hey, 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 right? We didn't know that. As soon as that final whistle went, we're like, right, let's go die for a pint. <laughs> Just get off the field as quick as you could. Get yourself showers, get a change, get in the bar. Yeah. Home or away. <laughs> None of this. Hey, 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 yeah, right. I'll tell you what, yeah, I'll, I'll away away you yeah, some other time. I'm, I've, got a, I've got a couple of meetings with a couple of pints. Oh, <laughs> and, and a couple of tales, just want to check whether these are true or not. Gary Gillespie said you'd have a sneaky cigarette on the coach coming back from oh, away yeah. games. No, I can. He used to hear it. I used to sit next to my house. He drove me back. But what I used to do, oh. there's a partition in there, the toilet's down there. And then we're here, we're playing cars, and there's jockey and, 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 and Macca or, or Dizzy. We used to rotate it. And, 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 and behind there is Kenny, Bugsy, and Evo just behind this partition. Went. And we'd have cans of lager going, going back, a few cans of lager, 10 and extra. And he'd have a fag, and he'd go, <laughs> blow it under the table, thinking that's not going to go to the front well, of the boys. Of course, he knew he was having a, he's having a slight right. couple of boys. Well, he had a couple, to be fair. <laughs> boys, he big guy. Gary particularly hated it. He used to say it all the time. <laughs> Bumper, you going to stop that? <laughs> but the thing was, I had the main man had my back. That was the chairman, Davy Mills. Because uh, Davy used to sit down the front and Davy liked to smoke. So. That was obviously I used to go, later, later on. I, I, used to, I used to get a lot of stick for the boys about the smoking, right? But they couldn't say nothing because the chairman was down the front smoking. So what I'd do, I'd go down the front, sit on the step beside Helmet, the driver, and Davy Mills, and we'd have, a, we'd have a smoke and have a chat. So nobody's going to tell the chairman to stop smoking. That's true, yeah. And if you're sat next to the chairman, they're not going to tell you to stop smoking. <laughs> that was fantastic. Yeah, I think that might have moved on a little bit. <laughs> since <laughs> then, Just right. a little bit. So. How about this one from Alan Hansen? He, he said that you were concerned you'd put on a lot of weight after you'd inadvertently weighed yourself oh. while carrying some sh heavy shopping bags. <laughs> well, that was in shit. We went on a, we went on a, on a, a cruise. <laughs> now, this cruise ship, by the way, you know when you think of cruise ships today? Yeah. This was like a tugboat <laughs> compared to cruise ships today. And we got off at Shetland. And him and his missus had the... We had no kids at the time, me and Elmer. So we had, a, we had a lie in. So we were getting off about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Him and Janet and Adam uh, and his wee man had got off earlier and they were coming on as we were going off. I said, hey, oh, what's going on in Shetland? He went, oh, he said, oh, it's not bad, good... A bit of shopping, if I like it, he said, but I'll tell you what, you should go to the bowling alley, it's fantastic. You can get a beer, the whole thing. I thought, brilliant. So we get off, so we go for some supplies, crisps, coke, absolutely. And it was an old-fashioned chemist we were at. And so they had one of those machines that you stand on, you put like a shilling in, and it tells you the way to you. So we'd been to the supermarket and got all the, all the supplies to take back on the boat. So the mule was carrying them. Anyway, I forgot while she was getting stuff at the pharmacy, I thought, you know what, I'll have a go and see what, see if we put any weight on. Stick my money in, and I'm standing there, and it went, Ding! <laughs> right? And it went, are you Jan Moby? <laughs> <laughs> right, so, anyway, so I've gone, what? And I'm, I'm standing there on it, and I'm shouting, Ellen's at the, the counter, and I'm going, Elmer, I've put a stone on. 
<laughs> and she went, Stephen, you've got the shopping bags in your hand. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Hey, and then, so then, so after that, she goes, right, let's go back to the boat. And I went, oh, so why don't we go and do a bit of bowling? I think I'll share this bowling alley. She went, I owe it. So walking around, half an hour walking around, and I'm stopping everybody going, excuse me, can you tell me where the bowling alley is? And they're like, bowling alley? What are you talking about? And I'm like, all right, doesn't matter. Stop another one. Excuse me, can you tell us where the bowling alley is? Anyway, must have done this with four people, and eventually we went, Hanson's wound me up again. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a bowling alley at all. <laughs> it never ends, does it? <laughs> oh, brilliant, brilliant. Last not but least, we've got our quiz. Yes, yes, we always do a quiz at the end with our superb guests. But before that, I have to say, see this? This is the same top, obviously Steve's not got us on, that we had in the 89 Hillsborough. Before we warmed up, Come out with these tracksuits on, and I've kept it ever since. Stonks, we're on the radio. It's just, uh, ju I, I know, but we're, not, we're, we're on the <laughs> telly. Well. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I don't, I don't know that. You should have told me it that. It still fits. <laughs> I can breathe out. It does fit as well. That's it amazing. Just, just about. It does fit. To but me. this <clears throat> quiz is six questions. And the reason it's six questions, as I said last time, is <clears throat> it's because Liverpool have won six European Cups, Champions League, call them whatever you want. Not one, not two, not three even. Six questions and you're going to get them made. No one else has won it six times. Can I ask you a question, Aldo, mate. before we do this? Yeah, I was asked a question a couple of years ago. And the question was, would you swap one Champions League trophy for being invincible? Now, my answer was yes. What do you say? What's invincible first? Not losing a game all the way through the season. Oh, Jesus. Oh. And I said yes. And the reason I said oh. yes is because, well, if you've got six, no. there's only there's only two teams in the history of football that have done it. That's Preston and Arsenal. Wow. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, but that was, well, that was 1874 or something. Yeah, it? but it doesn't matter. I mean, two teams in the history of football. Would you not rather be... Would you not sacrifice one no. to be one of those three? No, I'd rather, still rather have double the amount the Man United have had. Right. Agreed. So, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Oh, that's just wonderful. Yeah. Good question, though, man. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> anyway, I hope you do well in your six questions. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, Steve. Half. Number one. Here we go. You made your Liverpool debut in a goalless draw against Birmingham City in 1982. Which future Premier League manager was in the Birmingham team that day? Oh. Which future? He went on to manage in the Premier League. And was playing for Birmingham? Yeah. 82. Um, I'm thinking, what's his face? Was it Norwich in Portsmouth? I think I could be wrong. Was it Watford? Left-footed. You don't know, do you? No. <laughs> Alan Kirbishley. No, oh, Kirbishley. Right. That's a tough one, you know. Sorry, that's, yeah. that's, that's a tough... James, that's tough. That this one's tough. easier. This one's easier. Number two, when you signed in October 81, you were the second new signing for Liverpool that season. John McGregor. No. No, okay. Oh, oh, sorry. You have a, you have a, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> Who, I just coughed there. Didn't who, the other one arrived from Brighton for 900,000 oh, pounds. Michael For 900,000 pounds two months earlier. Robo. No. I, I thought oh, so. I, 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 I had gone there. Uh, from Brighton. From Brighton. Mark yeah. Lawrence. Mark, Mark Lawrence. Yeah. Yeah. We'll give you that. We'll give yeah, you that. Exactly. You know, third time. Well, it wasn't wrong. Robo was saying from Brighton. You get out of here. You're just getting a lot of other names first. To be fair, I should have come down late for this question. How many did Carrie get right? Four. I think he got four. Was it four out of six? It's been five pints too. Yeah. Yeah, you've had a couple of pints. You know what? Between five and ten pints, you can't beat me at pool. <laughs> Got no right. table, but next time, Steve, you are joint nineteenth on the list of Liverpool's all-time appearance holders on four, six, eight matches. Mm. Which legendary goalkeeper from the club's history uh, are you equal with on games played? Is he Scottish? No, he's no. from Belfast, Northern Irish. 
He was a few years before you. For Liverpool? Northern Irish? Yeah, goalkeeper. Oh, he's a legend. Oh, Tommy, Ray, legend, mate. Irish? Well before your time, obviously. Aye. I can only think of Clem. Before me, I can think of Clem and Tommy Lawrence. No, not before them, yeah. I don't know. Eliza Scott. Yeah. Eliza Scott, yeah. yeah. Tough one, though. No, I wouldn't have Number four. <laughs> <laughs> you scored 46 goals for Liverpool. Against which club did you score the most? Ooh. Newcastle? Did, did, I'll give you a clue. It's it's six. Six goals you scored. And Liverpool right? have played them already this season. Yeah. I think you're right. What you said, then? it? It's got to be. Newcastle? No. no. Oh, um, maybe we played Newcastle. <laughs> Shit. <Can't know. laughs> Just beat them, maybe. Villa. No. Chelsea. No. Oh, it's not Bournemouth, anyway. No. So, so it's Chelsea or, 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 or Villa, isn't it? Yeah. Jesus Christ. How many tips do you want? It's Chelsea. It's Chelsea. Yes. You got six against Chelsea. Oh, I scored a couple. I yeah, got yeah, a couple yeah. of races. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> right. I, remember, I, should, I, I think I remember right. tripping uh, the Welsh, Welsh guy. What was the Welsh goalie? He was the assistant at Chelsea all the time. Oh, Mevan Day. No. Welsh. Oh, Welsh. Well, oh, that was assistant. I was listening to my oh, dudes all the time. Freaking hell, you're giving me a quiz when I'm giving you a quiz. <laughs> right. Number five, you made your last appearance for Liverpool in a 4 1 win away to Burnley in the League Cup in 1994. Which young Liverpool midfielder scored twice that night? Ooh. Either Jamie or Hodge. 1994. You were right first time. Right, Jamie. Jamie Redknapp? Right. On to the final one. You won Footballer of the Year in 1989. Mm. Five Liverpool players have won mm. that prestigious award since. Oh, can you name oh, them? Since, since. Wow. I'm going to go Gerard. Yeah, correct. Fowler. Owen? Nope. Nope. Owen. Nope. Oh. Torres. Nope. Oh, you're on that. Someone won it. Someone won it the year after you. You 89. Peter. Beersley? No. <laughs> <laughs> You've set the bar on this. <laughs> I told you before, I'd not get any of it. <laughs> Give me a clue. Um, it's got the same oh, yeah, name. You should. Yeah, it's got the same name. Yeah. You should get them, are you honestly? Do. Is it a doddle once you've seen it? Rushy. No. <laughs> Go on, keep on going. Go on. Same name as him. But not him. That's a great clue. Same name as him, but not him. He, oh, he signed, John. He signed a few, John. He signed a few months after Aldo. Yeah, you know that. God, you were there at the same time. Barnsley. Yeah. Yeah. So Barnsley won it in 1990. I said Barnsley before. I never heard you say what I said. No, no, uh, we've got a camera to prove it. Right. We need VAR. VAR needs to take yeah, a look at that. Hey, I'm going to go Gerard. Yeah. Correct. Fowler? Owen. Nope. Nope. Owen? Nope. Oh. Torres? Nope. Um, the cameras do lie, by the way. <laughs> right, so we've got Barnes, we've got Gerard. Yeah. And the other one's quite recent. There's two quite recent ones. It should be easy again. Jeez, what are you talking Suarez. about? Yes, yes. Suarez. Yes, Suarez, you're there. And then two more recent than Suarez. She's been talking for him after show about him. Van Dijk. Nope. We haven't even mentioned Van Dijk. Come on. Salah. Yes. 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 One more. Come on, Leo. Who has just one recently one gone more. abroad, one one very more. far away, where it's very talking hot. Of, yeah. The Sa- more, I don't know. I'm playing in, playing in Saudi now. Money. Henderson. Henderson. 
Do you know what? What a great okay. show. I, I wouldn't expect nothing else without with my mate here. What a great show. Oh, He's made us laugh so much today like he did when we played in great that great side. Uh, wonderful to see you, mate. Top man. Thanks, Bob. Nice to see you, son. Love you, son. Great to have you on the show, Steve. Yeah. Cheers, Peter. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. I would just like to thank Steve for coming. We had a great time. And we look forward to seeing you on all those podcasts next month.